Hello everyone, welcome back to Razor Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. Patch 4 has recently been released and we are in version 0.1.4.0. It fixed a bunch of bugs, but as far as I could tell, no fundamental features have been added, no re-entry heating or anything like that. But of course, bug fixes was primarily what we are concerned about at this stage. And most of the bug fixes have to do with the editor and constructing vessels. I didn't see anything that I would need to make a test for to test specifically. And so I've decided to go with a different strategy. I need a structured way to test uh, the various systems that we have right now, the various parts. And I think I'm going to do a pseudo career. I'm going to pretend that I'm doing career mode. I've done career mode so many times in Kerbal Space Program 1 before, and I'm just going to sort of simulate that, what a regular player would do during career mode. And so we're going to start a new uh, campaign here. And uh, I'm just going to say, well, difficulty, uh, fine rocket sign. Uh, I, I think we should actually allow that. And docking tolerance, low, fine, no unbreakable joints. Okay. Testing patch 4. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is basically what I would do at the beginning of a career in KSU one We will have a pod. Uh, we won't have the couplers initially. And initially what we have are a few engines and the solid rocket boosters. Now, without the decoupler, we can't decouple off the solid fuel booster. And it used to be that one of these would be fine, and the parachute can handle all of it. We don't need a heat shield for this anyway. This is just going to be our first launch. The first contract is usually first launch, and these are among the parts that in KSP-1 we would normally have at the beginning. But let's see what happens. No go. Off we go. Let's see how high we get with this. The pod's torque is pretty good. It looks like we're getting to space pretty easily. So we're not going to need a separate space rocket. Let's hope we're not too severe coming back down. So they would need the astronaut complex upgrade to do the EVA, so we won't have Bob do the EVA. But I'm sure with the crew reports, much science will be gotten here. And enough to get us decouplers, which is what we would want. And uh, now, will career mode go exactly the same way in KSP2 as it did in KSP1? I doubt it. But, there's not a whole lot of difference you can do with the parts as they are. So, there are limitations. And presumably they'll still want to start off with Kerbals, because Kerbals are the selling point here. Um, Kerbals, Kerbals are the special sauce. So, will it be able to slow down so that the parachute can deploy? That's our question. We can... Uh, I was trying to use my joystick. We can sort of... Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Deploy more. Please deploy more. Oh! Okay, well, anyway, nobody died. Okay, now. Previously, sometimes the booster would uh, ablate when we hit the ground. Oh. That was a nice thunk, actually. Uh... Active vessel is recoverable. Okay, well, um... Then, recover vessel. So, let's try to go to orbit, I guess. Um, so, we would use that science to unlock decouplers. This is important. Now we have some of the new engines, like the Coronet. But we'll presume that that's advanced technology for now. Normally what we'd have is the swivel. Well, we might want a thrust limiter on this stage, because right now uh, it is going to give us a thrust weight ratio of 4. So we'll just sort of go 50% on that. 2 is fine. So that's 4,000. That should be enough to get to orbit. This is 15.22 tons, so this is pretty normal. Even with the heat shield, it should work out for us. If we needed a little bit more, that, that would be fine. We might be able to sneak another little tank in here. Press weight ratio, I hope is reading correctly, and that will be 10 parts. Uh, we have a 30 part limit in KSP-1 at this stage, and 18 tons. Now, I'm not trying to do it like we're going to 
uh, unlock the entire tech tree in as few missions as possible. I never do that anyway. Uh, but I'm trying to test things, so we actually will be somewhat maximizing the number of launches that we're doing. All right, uh, let's have those stage at the same time. There's no reason for that. And let's go. And do I need fins on this, or will the swivels gimbling be enough? We will find out. I think I've turned way too quickly, though. Okay, we're past the speed of sound. On um, Bob's attempt to get to orbit. Should be okay with plenty to spare. Now, we probably won't have the apoapsis, periapsis, and time to apoapsis, and... Uh, Time the periapsis data initially. Okay, staging. They've gone with a different looking nav ball for orbital view. I don't know why it's so dark. Hmm. Okay, we'll coast. Okay, we have made orbit. And we have 650 meters per second left. We'll talk about the moon in a bit. Uh, we'll, we'll go there. Again, uh, here we're... We have to wonder exactly how much certain things would cost in career mode, like unlocking the astronaut complex for EVAs, or whether we can upgrade the launch pad just yet. Stuff like that. As far as what we can do to get to the moon or something. So... Or the tracking station for plotting things. Tracking station I don't need. It's not like the moon's at any sort of inclination or anything. Okay, our deorbit burn brings us down. And we'll get rid of this stage. That was quiet. I thought I'd get a th thunk at least. Hmm. Okay, arming the chute. Yeah, so even with a heat shield, that would have been enough margin. So I hear that there have been orbital difficulties around other bodies like the Moon and Minmus as far as orbital decay. I hadn't experienced that before, but that's probably because I didn't hang out around those things very much. So we'll see this time. That I think they were in the process of fixing it, but hadn't fixed it, fixed it yet. So we'll see. We're obviously not simulating Minmus science spam here. I don't know if they'll do anything to stop that, but... Okay, here we come. Parachute deploys a little bit early. I need to tweak that. <laughs> I suppose... It's safe-ish. I think the splash occurred a little bit, the splash sound occurred a little bit early. And would Bob be able to get EVA over the water? Probably. They can still EVA on Kerbin after all. I don't, I don't know about the buoyancy of this thing. I mean, sometimes it seems like it's floating above the water. Anyway. That is not a priority for fixes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that is not a critical concern. Alright. So, let's try to go to the moon. Apparently I didn't take long enough building the craft in order for it to save it and make sure it popped back up here when I came back in. So we have to build it again. This time I am going to put a heat shield. Of course we don't have the thermal system, uh, but we will put on a heat shield just for simulation purposes. And uh, from low carbon orbit it's not maybe necessary to have a heat shield. In KSP-1 sometimes it felt like it was necessary, sometimes not. Generally not. Uh, but it depends on what they decide to do with the heat system, obviously. So I didn't have a heat shield before, but we probably could have carried one. It wouldn't have been a problem with the Delta V we had uh, extra at the end. But we will have one this time. However, I am not going to put on all the ablator. We will have 0.1 tons. So half the ablator. And that should be more than enough coming back from the moon. Now, can we go to the moon? Well, I'm going to limit us to 18 tons. 
and we're going to assume that we don't have the terrier yet. So that's going to be a bit of a issue. I think using the swivel is not great in this situation. But we will. We'll try. It's got to be tight. And we'll see whether we can do it. And then at least we would get high over Kerbin Science. And then we can unlock the terrier potentially or whatever. I'm just imagining what they're going to do, so I don't know for sure. And I'm assuming we're still swivel bound here. There's an argument for the Reliant, but really the... Is there an argument for the Reliant? There's no arg argument for the Reliant. Um, hmm. I mean, the Reliant has more thrust. But even at sea level, it has less ISP than the swivel, which is sort of strange. They might want to reverse those two. Like, this should be 260 and that should be 280. Otherwise, the Reliant isn't that useful. I mean, the swivel is heavier and it has less thrust. There is There are possibilities there, I suppose. Maybe the swivel is higher in the tech tree, I don't know. But... That will be tough for beginning players if the first engine they have doesn't have any gimbling. 4,418. But I don't need the mob propellant. Okay, I think this is what we're going to try it with, but probably it is going to be tough to get to the moon with. I have T Tim C. Kerman this time. Alright, let's go. So either we're going to the moon or we're just going to go to high orbit in order to unlock the terrier is the plan. Oh, I forgot to edit the parachute, but we can do that here. I don't understand the kilopascal thing. It's probably not supposed to be kilopascals. I think they mean atmospheres there. Okay, well, definitely past the speed of sound and everything. Pretty good trajectory. Okay, staging. I'll keep it there for now. We'll wait till apoapsis. 987 though. Carrying the heat shield is the big thing. If we didn't carry the heat shield, then we probably would be able to have enough, but... Well, that's a little bit shy. There we go. Um, 752 is not enough. And I removed the mod propellant and everything, but we'll we'll go to a high orbit, pretend to get high orbit science. But then instead of doing a lunar flyby, we'll assume that we're going to get into lunar orbit and come back. Okay, we'll reserve the rest. This should be high enough for high over... Well, let's see. Let's push it a little bit. High over Kerbin. Geo geostationary orbit was like 2,900 something, if I recall. So right about uh, that'll be beyond that. So that'll definitely, definitely be high over Kerbin. We do need to reserve a little bit because right now our periapsis is not in the atmosphere, and we are pulling it into the atmosphere. Should be good enough. Glow of the sun behind Kerbin. Seems like the sun is a bit small for that, but... Okay, letting go of the stage. Well, I pressed space bar, it didn't do anything. Okay, now it did, but it didn't make any sound. I don't anticipate any problems in this episode, but it'd be interesting if we got any, right? Okay, so that was just high orbit. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to pause. I know there's a key to go straight to 1x warp. I'm just not used to doing that because I've been playing KSP1 for 10 years. Okay, so recover vessel. We would assume that Tim would walk out and get some science around here. Okay. So, the Terrier. The reason that the Terrier is important is because it's light. Its ISP has been nerfed compared to what it had in KSP-1. It was 345, 
well, sometimes it was different too. But uh, now it's only 335. But the main thing is this is 1.4 tons and this is 0.5 tons. And it's sufficient for this stage. It says here that the thrust weight ratio is basically 0.5. But that's at sea level and it gets double that in vacuum or more or less. So we'll have basically a TWR of 1. And so we have 1,000 meters per second more than we used to, which should be plenty to get to the moon, make orbit, and come back. And going. Now I'm going to assume we don't have the tracking station upgrade, but there's nothing I can do about the fact that we can see certain information that we wouldn't normally be able to see. I just won't be able to plot a maneuver. So we will be able to see the resulting orbit and the fact that we're encountering the moon or not encountering the moon. And I'm not going to try and pretend that I can't see that. And staging. Okay. So our little terrier is accelerating us just fine with oodles of delta V. Okay, we're in orbit, and the general principle for transferring to the moon when we don't have any maneuver nodes is to wait until it appears over the horizon. And so that'll be coming up soon. That only works for Kerbin's moon. Well, I mean, maybe some other thing, but not recommended in general. Okay, so let's go. And then going blind, we would just wait until we have our apoapsis hit the moon's orbit. Okay, so we are actually hitting the moon, but that's what would happen if you did that really, really precisely. So we're just going with it. And we are going to correct that once we would find that out in moon space. Normally we wouldn't see it like this. So we have 913 left at this stage. And so I go, oops, we're crashing into the moon. Let's go away, radial out. Okay, 50 kilometers will be fine for today. Best thing's the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, I just watched a video recently about good things about KSB2, and I gotta say, the soundtrack is something that's pretty good. Okay, that's a nice tight orbit. I mean, it's not as tight as it could be, but it's tight enough. So, uh, let's see if there's some sort of orbital decay. I didn't want to get any lower because it limited my time warp even more. I don't know what the circumstances, because I didn't experience it before either. I don't know what the circumstances for this orbital decay issue might be. And yeah, maybe it doesn't happen with the moon anymore. But we'll just spend a few orbits around here, in case there's something peculiar. Okay, well I haven't seen any anomalies here, so let's just go back. And I won't plot it, we'll just go around here-ish, we'll go prograde. About 10.30 if the moon's own orbit is 12 o'clock. Okay, 23 kilometers. I mean, we don't have heating anyway. That should be okay. Let's depart the moon. This is all very basic, admittedly. But, well, this all had better work. And so far, so good. Okay, Kerbin, here we come. Again, when I press spacebar the first time, I guess we have to double spacebar? Is that safe to assume or not? Anyway, arming the parachute. Oh, we're ending up in a nice spot here, maybe, or there. <laughs> uh, we might not be in the nice spot. Whoops. So close. But we're in the rough. And... Plop. Actually, I like the sound that the pod makes when it crunches against the surface. I, I'm not fond of this plop. This wasn't too interesting. Okay, but we can recover. Okay, same thing, just with Minmus, but we'll sort of do it blind. I still won't plot it. We'll assume no tracking station upgrade, so 
Let's just go. And we'll see what we can do. I've had trouble with Minmus before, so we want to see that the SOI change doesn't do anything weird to our orbit and all that, but I think they've pretty firmly fixed that, but it's good to double check. Okay, staging. Okay, we're in orbit. And let's see, Minmus is more interesting, of course. I think we'll just try to burn out around here-ish. So, I mean, we'll sort of do a more natural transfer out to Minmus and then do a mid-course correction kind of thing. So, around here-ish, Minmus will get around there by that time. Let's go for it. Yep. Well, we got an encounter and we can see it, so it's cheating, but anyway. Maybe we'd be able to get this information. You don't know how the career mode will actually work, but... Anyway, the key thing is we are clearly a little bit low, so we're going to lift our orbit up at a mid-course correction to get closer to Minmus. So we'll do that. Like so. That's probably close enough, but we want to get closer in. I think that'll be prograde. Assuming it's showing me everything, I, I don't know, do I want to be a little bit inclined? I think we'll go a little bit further up. Okay, that'll be equatorial around Minmus and keep things simple. It says 15 kilometers, which is fine. Okay, there's Minmus. I retrograded a little bit early there, so we're lopsided. That periapsis definitely looks a little bit low. I think that'll be time warp restricted. Well, we'll see about any weird orbital issues. Yeah, uh, looks like 12 kilometers. Okay, let's keep the apoapsis side at least. I do want to spend some time around here just to make sure nothing weird happens. Okay, there's a weird thing where the camera flips. I, I don't think I noticed that around the moon. Okay, well I've hung out enough and I've changed my orbit a couple of times. I think we'll just head back. And I'm not gonna plot it, I'll just pretend that we can't do that yet. Yeah, but we would do the burn over here. Maybe I should plot it, just to see it saying the right thing. I'm not gonna try and get the actual result, I just want to make sure. Uh, it goes into lower orbit, yeah that's fine. <laughs> we'll do maneuvers and test that whole bit business later, but for now, we can do this blind. Now, generally speaking, doing this without plotting it, we'll end up with a very high apoapsis, and it might be a good idea... In this case, we're, our apoapsis is behind us, so maybe we should just continue like this, but if the apoapsis was ahead of us, then I would wait, get out of Minmus SOI, and then do a retro burn at apoapsis. It might be necessary to just do it in, in a uh, uh, carbon space, I think. Okay, coming in. We're coming in polar. And separating stage again. Okay, so two, two spacebar presses. Okay, slowing down just fine. Probably ending up in hills or mountains, though. Okay, so with these basic, basic things, no severe anomalies. But obviously we need to get to the more interesting things in future missions. Oh, this time it caused us to tip over. That's interesting. Wonder why. Hmm. Alright, well, here we are. Tim has landed. Recover vessel. Alright, so with it being night time here at the KSC, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.